really hope you've been feeling the Spirit moving. Amen. I know He's been moving heavily in me. And I, I just, uh, that's always exciting. And, and it's more exciting when you have to be the guy that stands in this pulpit and bring the Word. Uh, I, I don't know. I know some of you have done this job. Uh, and, and some of you have been blessed with the ability or the, the uh, actually it's a, it's a gift. To get to come and share like this. But this isn't something that we take lightly. It's a big deal to stand up here and proclaim the Word. And so when you're doing that, and you can feel the presence of the Spirit moving among the people, it gives a freedom. Amen. It gives an ability to speak truth. And many of you stopped me this morning and said something about how much you enjoyed the service yes, last week and, and how you saw the excitement and the energy. and I just want you to understand that comes from you serving and praising God. Amen. It comes from you being willing to allow the Spirit to move in you. Because when you do that, you're bringing the Holy Spirit and He has freedom to move in me and in each one of us. Praise God. It's a good place to be. Amen. It's a good place to be. <clears throat> so today, I want to start out by talking, by reading the scriptures. And I'm going to be talking to you about us getting busy. If you haven't seen that on your bulletin yet, and you haven't read that screen yet, let me just tell you, we're going to get busy. We have things to do. And God is calling us to get busy. So let me invite you to stand with me in honor and reverence to the Word of God. <clears throat> As you can see, I'll be reading from Colossians chapter 3, verse 22 through 24. <coughs> I'm in the New International Version, NIV, if anybody wants to find that on your own device. It says this, Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything, and do it not only when their eye is on you and to curry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Amen. There is a reading. You can be seated. And let's pray together. <coughs> Lord God, I'm always humbled by the way you meet with us. I'm always over overwhelmed by your presence when I truly stop and focus on you and what you are doing. I thank you, Lord for the way you allow us to worship. I thank you for the way that you inhabit the praises of your people. I thank you, Lord, that you fill us every time you fill this place with your spirit. And every time we settle and allow ourselves to be connected to you, you show up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the blessing that we're enjoying. And thank you for the way you're moving. Now, God, as we get into your word today, I pray that you would hide me in the shadow of your cross. I pray that I would only say the things that you have for me to say today. And, Lord, that your spirit would protect every ear that has an ear to hear. That they would only hear what you're saying through me today. We give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> Last week's message, uh, I shared what I thought was going to be a New Year challenge. Uh, I, the main point of that message was that Jesus is not a New Year resolution. He's, he's much, much, much more than a New Year resolution. And He wants to give us new life that causes lasting changes in us all lasting changes. So, not like a New Year resolution where we make a decision to 
go without, I don't know, go, do away with caffeine or not drink as much coffee, right? Or, or not eat as much or begin to run more often or not that, but instead a complete overall change that doesn't go backwards. Jesus is different than us making a decision. Jesus is more about entering us as we allow him freedom to come in and show us the way and lead us on the path and take us where he wants us to go. We know that for this to happen, we can no longer live as we did before we received the new life that he gives. And part of this new life is our obedience. That's a tough word. Our obedience to follow him as he directs. So, with that said, I want to start a new series today that will help us focus on our, our vision as a church and the mission that we've been given. I, I've been working on this series for a while now, but this, this past week has, I don't know, it's, it's just been a little strange for me because I found myself wondering, well, well how do I start? Again, I've been doing this a while. You know, this is not a, a new occupation for me. It's not a new calling. And, and there, every once in a while, God will impress on me the people need to hear this. And so as I'm working through it, I find sometimes that he gives me multiple sermons through it, which is the case in this case. And, and I get it started, and then I'm like, but which one do I do first, Lord? Where do I go? How, how do I set this up? And there's always this, this danger in that, that at the very first one, you'll offend, you'll push away, and people will be like, I don't even care what he has to say about the room. There's always that fear. There's always that possibility. As a matter of fact, today, this is one of those times when my daughters would say, Dad, you're sharing too much information. So if you want to know when I share too much information, this is one of them. Keep going. I was putting on my boots, in case you didn't know that, I wear cowboy boots most Sunday mornings. I was putting on my boots, and Barb says, I don't know, you might want to rethink some of that. I said, oh, whoa, 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 don't tell me that on Sunday morning. <laughs> Tell me that on Thursday night. I can got some time. To... Not because what's being said is wrong or because what's being said is even questionable. But it could be taken wrong. It could be that as I set up a sermon series, I could say something that would say to you, whoa, he's going somewhere I don't want to hear. I'm just going to check out for a few weeks. I don't know. But, you know, I stand up here and, and sometimes this place looks really crowded and sometimes it looks like there's nobody here. I don't know who's here and who's not here and I really don't make that much eye contact with you. In case you haven't figured that out, I spend a lot of time looking right over your heads. It's easier. If I'm looking at you and you start frowning at me, I know I've said something that's not you're not happy with. So I don't look at you. And if you start laughing at me, then I might start laughing and we lose our train of thought and everything goes back. Here's the point. What I have to say today, I believe God's given me. I believe He's been pushing me to share more, to do more, to train better, and to actually listen as He's speaking to us. And so, as I was trying to prepare for Advent, if you know when that was, that started December, the first Sunday of December. As I was preparing for that sermon, that service, there, there was four sermons, uh, God said, I want you to take them from being a recruited, a recruiter, not a recruit, what is that called? Somebody that's talking to the recruiter, what's that called? Come on, guys. A recruit. From being a recruit to being active army. I want you to take them from point A 
to way down the road. Okay? And so I've been thinking this through and and I've been I've been meeting with people and I've been going to district things and I've been having lunch and, and dinner with people and, and sometimes you just pulled me off to the side and said, Let me tell you about what I was what I heard when I was in Canada. Oh, I just gave that away. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but it's all been like reinforcements that this is what we're supposed to be talking about. So let's get into it. We have a written mission statement here at CCNAP. It says, Through the saving grace of Jesus Christ, we exist to see people's lives transformed, empowered, and forever changed. Praise God. Amen. Now Pastor Barb shared a very inspiring message just a couple weeks ago telling us what this means and challenging, challenging us to get busy doing. So, if you missed that sermon, if you missed anything in that part, make sure you either get on our app or you go to YouTube and search for Ed Lianza. And look for Barb's face. It'll be right there in front. Should be one week ago. Not last week, but the week before. Should be right there. Watch that. You're going to want to know what she had to say as God was speaking to her. But since she did such a great job with that, I'm going to take a different approach today. Would that be okay? Good. I don't think you really want me to preach Barb's message. It was a good message, but it wouldn't sound the same from me. So we're going to look at this a little different. The passage I just shared from Colossians 3 tells us that we're not working to impress, increase, or even improve our church. Now you can think property there. You can think inside interior. You can think a lot of different things, but that's not what we're really working to do. This passage says that we are to do everything as if we're doing it for the Lord. Everything as if we're doing it for the Lord. Now, does that mean that we're not, we're not paving the parking lot to increase what the Lord can do? Absolutely not. <laughs> By paving the parking lot, some of you said to me today, you know what's really exciting? I don't have to worry about tripping on my way into the service. I don't have to worry about falling into that crater that was in the way between me and the door. That's a good thing. And as I was sharing yesterday at the garage sale, it improves the neighborhood. Because us putting down a new blacktop parking lot makes the houses across the street worth more. Amen. Really does. It improves the neighborhood. Now, I want you to hear me say that as we're talking about this passage, I do understand that there's more than one way to interpret it. So I want you to show, I want you to hear what I hear God saying to me as I read this right now. Right now. I hear God telling me to say to, to stay focused on what He sent Barbara and I here to proclaim. I hear Him saying, stay focused. Keep your nose to the grindstone. Stay on it. And, and I'm really good. If any of you know me well, I'm really good at being one track. Like, I'm going here and you're over here and I don't even see you. Sometimes you're right here, and I don't even see you. And every once in a while, if you're a little bit shorter, you can be right here, and I don't see you. It's true. Barb is in my life for that reason. Grab me by the neck, say, whoa, you're about to run someone over. Quit it. Uh -uh. I'm just being honest. So, so I hear God saying, Stay to the grindstone. Keep on proclaiming what I sent you guys there to proclaim. And he gave Barb and I a message when we came to Spring Hill. It was to call the people back to building his kingdom. Amen. Call the people back to building his kingdom. Now, of course, we know that when we arrived here, 
Many of you were already doing this. But he kept saying, share, tell them to share their faith. Tell them to get busy. Tell them to tell people about me. Tell them to love people as they have been loved. Tell them that they can and will make a difference in their community if they will listen to my voice and begin to share what I give them again. So, <clears throat> we've made it our mission to continually call the people who come into our services to an understanding of our mission statement. Our mission statement. Through the saving grace of Jesus Christ, we exist to see people's lives transformed, empowered, and forever changed. That's a pretty amazing idea. Amen. And we do this by letting go of our personal plans, our personal ideas, or in some cases, our personal ministries. Huh. That's, this is where it can get a little touchy. And this is what Barb was telling me to be concerned about. And she probably is right. So please don't be offended, especially if I call you out. It's not meant that way. You see, it means that... Thank you, Stacy. I love your, your, uh, your support. It's very helpful. We do this by building what God has been giving us through our ministries. And, and sometimes we have different ideas that have to be shared. So sometimes I may have to get out of this pulpit and let somebody else speak. Because God gives somebody else a word that he needs to share with, or she needs to share, maybe. Because I was thinking God as I said he. But he could use man or woman to share his word with us. And as he does, I need to get out of the way and let him or her do that. And we have to allow people that are coming into our services to have a voice as they become a part of our church. I'm excited that we're going to have a, a, a membership, uh, not a membership class, we already did that. We're going to take in the membership a, a few people next week. I'm excited about that. That means something. It means that people are hearing and connecting with each other in here. Not just what they're hearing from the pulpit, but what they're hearing from each other. So it's exciting to be a part of that. And as we give them their voice, we have to allow them to take some action. So, I'm not trying to be mean here, but listen to what I'm trying to say. That means that sometimes somebody will have to speak in this pulpit beside me. Sometimes someone will have to play a guitar instead of me. Sometimes someone besides Summer will lead worship. Sometimes someone besides Leonard and Sharon will run the soundboard or the computer. Those kinds of things, every one of these things that we do are necessary. And every one of these things are being filled. That's not a bad thing. I'm not saying Summer shouldn't lead worship. I'm not saying Leonard shouldn't be on the soundboard. I'm not even saying I shouldn't be preaching. What I'm saying is, as God moves, we have to bring people on and give them a voice and allow them to speak, allow them to do. It also means that as these people come, they may not do it the way we do it. This is where it gets hard. You know, I mean, if they don't run sound like Leonard runs sound, well, we don't want them. Wrong. If, if they don't set up, if they don't set up our I always say PowerPoint, it's not that. Our pro presenter. If they don't set up our pro presenter the way we set it up, well, that's not going to work. You know, there's only one way to import stuff to that. Not true, by the way. 
There's only one way to hear a sound. And so that's the way it has to be. There's no, I had somebody say, you know, I came to your church and I liked it because it wasn't so loud. I went to a church before I came to your church and it was so loud I couldn't stand it. That's a good thing because there's people that like it loud. They should go there. And there's people that like it like we do it and they should come here. And I don't know about the rest of the churches, I guess, whatever. Let's just have them all come here. <laughs> I never, I never actually ask or even want people that are already connected to a church to come here. Never my desire. You know why? Because I know without a doubt there are thousands of people who wake up every morning and can see this building or do see this building who don't know Jesus at all. Let's reach them. Amen. Let's fill this place with them. They need to know the love of Christ. Amen. They need more than what they're getting. And they're watching, watching football. I like to watch football. I like to watch basketball. I like to watch hockey. I like to watch golf. I like to watch... Can I go on? You kind of get the idea. But... When it comes to being in the presence of God with His people, whew, nothing compares. Amen. Nothing compares. And, and as people come, and as we bring them along, and as we train them, or teach them, or disciple them, whatever we want to call it, as we do that, we're not giving them freedom to break it. We're giving them freedom to speak into it. Somebody might step into this pulpit, bring the word of the Lord, and somebody that's been sitting here for 20 years might hear it for the first time and give their life to Christ. Amen. Somebody might come into this church that knows how to run sound better than Leonard. And they might be able to hear something different than him, and they might be able to enhance our worship in another way. Somebody might be able to might come in here that has a fantastic voice and wants to lead. Do you know that God sometimes, when He's asking me to sing, sometimes He'll tell me, "You need to lead. You need to lead the congregation in this song." Sometimes it happens, and when it does, if I don't say to Summer, Lord, Summer, the Lord is telling me that I need to lead this song, then that's shame on me. Now, if I say that to Summer and she says, tough, you're not a singer. Well then, then shame on her. Right? But you get it, right? We have to give each other the ability to speak, to sing, to change, to do. That's what God's calling us to do. Here's another one of those too much information. I have no idea if I'm anywhere near what I wrote down for my sermon. <laughs> I'm not in that and I haven't been for a long time. I just know the Spirit of God wants us to hear that each of us has something to do. Each of us has something that needs to be done. And each of us needs to get out of the way so someone else can do something. It's just the truth. That's how we grow. Amen. And it's how we make a difference. If you want to grow, you have to let people have a voice. In your life, as well as in your church. It's called family. Mm, it's called family. And it's also called empowering. If we'll empower each other, like our... Like our vision statement says, mission statement says, it will empower each other. We'll see. We'll see the Spirit move even stronger. Sharon, if you're trying to follow along, I'm going to go all the way down to slide 10. It brings me to this vision statement that we have. This vision statement also speaks to us about what we're supposed to do. See, we envision Christ followers being equipped 
and serving through Christian love and deeds in our church community. Empowering. We envision, envision Christ followers. Okay, yes, we believe they should be saved. We believe they should be committed to serving Christ and His church, this church, if they're going to lead here. But we also believe that we should be equipping them so that they can serve through Christian love and deeds. Because that, again, is what makes a difference. Ask somebody who's only been coming to this church for a month or two. Do you feel love when you come here? Do you feel accepted when you come here? Do you feel like you're gaining a voice when you come here? If any of those is no, we need to fix that. That's how it works, according to our mission and vision statements. And it's it's pretty exciting when a vision like that really gets to take hold. And when it really happens, because people begin to meet Jesus and commit to knowing Him and His church more, that's when it gets really exciting. They begin to deeply embrace His teaching. They begin to apply what they read in the Scriptures. They begin to care for people that Jesus shows them need their care. That's when we, as His church, begin to equip them as they encourage each other. Then we, we, we encourage them, we support them, and we disciple them. That's part of it. You can't just tell somebody about Jesus and walk away. You've got to take them by the hand help them find their way. Not make them look like you. Please. I can tell you the world doesn't need more than one of me. True. But help them find their way through the Word of God. Do you know, according to the estimated census that came out in 2017, there are at least 105,000 people in Spring Hill. Now can you imagine what kind of impact CCNAS could have on those people if we were truly equipping and serving them with Christian love? Can you imagine what might happen if we were determined to make a Christian difference in the surrounding community this year? Ooh, that sounds like a challenge in itself. Can you imagine what might happen if we were to give up what we think about how Jesus should work in people around us and started praying that he would fill them with a desire to know him through a sincere salvation experience that calls them to action in Christian love? Praise God. Hmm, that looks different. That doesn't sound like how I was discipled. I can tell you, I was discipled by uh, uh, people that were about 40 and 50 years older than me. They made a difference in my life. I still love them and talk about them today. They significantly changed me. But when I didn't see eye to eye with them about something that was not necessarily cut and dry, then they didn't necessarily like that. And they would try to force me to take on their thoughts. Do you ever do that? Uh, my pastor used to say, all right, everybody say amen or ouch. Yeah. I say ouch way more than I want to say these days. What if our community began to hear about how the Holy Spirit wants to fill them with His assurance of truth and direction instead of what they should or shouldn't do? What if they hear about becoming a Romans 12, 1 and 2 type follower? Hmm, that would be interesting. Well, just in case you don't know what that means, let me read it to you. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, 
I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, <coughs> pleasing, and perfect will. Hmm. Let me tell you what I know would happen. I know this because see, I've lived it a couple times. If this were to happen in our community, we would have a hard time getting everyone into this sanctuary for our service. I'm just telling you. We would not be able to contain all the people. We had a, we had a church that we could easily get 100 people in. So we put out about 140 chairs. And I'm not kidding. There was no aisles. There was one aisle down the middle. It was very small. We were up against the wall on both sides, all the way from about two feet from the from the altar to the back wall. And we had people standing. When people get this, you cannot contain what God will do. And, and, and I want you to know, I'm not just talking about Sunday morning either. We had trouble seeing people on Wednesday nights. When this happened in Little Irondale, Ohio, which is a town of about 300, did you hear me say <coughs> the census said there was 105,000? In a town of about 300, we started having trouble seating people for every service. And every time we had a special service, you know, back then we had things called revivals. I'm old enough to remember revivals. By the way, our revivals were every six months. That was when we had those scheduled. And then we had special revivals that God just chose to send. But not just then. We would have, this is what would happen. Not only would we have trouble keeping people seated, we would also have to have services like we had last week a lot. Yes. Amen. Baptism services, they happen because here's what happens. When, when Jesus' love begins to be shared with people and people begin to accept him into their lives, they tend to want to follow his example and his word. And both of those things call a new believer to be baptized. And since they'll be coming to know him through the ministries of this church, they'll also want to share their growth with this church. It's never ending. When God says your vision is too small, that's because we're thinking in our minds what we can do. Before long, we'll find ourselves looking for better ways to minister to people who are becoming more like Jesus. They're coming to hear the truth. And they're coming because they know that the truth will set them free. Amen. And we'll all be watching in amazement as God builds His kingdom here in Spring Hill through CC Nets. One more thing. You and I need to understand that God builds His kingdom through us. He will also build His church through us. Now, we tend to think of that as the same thing. It's not. If you and I would just start leading people to Jesus and letting Him send them where they go, we would see Him build His church. We don't need to make sure they come here. They'll go where they need to go to be fed. Meaning, the more He asks from us, the more he'll provide for us. I don't know if you've heard me say this. I've only said it about a thousand times since I've been here. But you can't outgive God. Amen. You just can't do it. But then you say, well, Pastor, how can you expect us to do these things? Don't you know we're already doing all we can? 
See, I believe there are people in this room today who are doing all they can. There's no doubt in my mind. There's people in this room today that are doing all they can. But what about the rest of us? Shouldn't we also be feeling challenged to be more involved? Shouldn't we also find our way to do something that will cause someone who doesn't know Jesus to begin to desire a life that's filled with His love? Shouldn't we be stretching ourselves to share the gospel with the people God is putting in our lives? We're faced with a decision. And that decision is asking us to get off our blessed assurance <laughs> and do something. I've named this series that we're beginning today Moving from Basic Training to Active Army. And it's my desire to see every one of us buy into this idea that this title brings. You see, many people attend the show, but only a few people act in it. Many people sit in a theater, but only a few are involved in the production. Many people enjoy the freedom given to those who fight for it. But there are only a few who fight on the front lines. It's time to get real with who we are in Christ Jesus. It's time for us who have begun to follow him to start studying how we can make a bigger impact on the people around us. We'll find all of these answers, all of this study in Scripture. Go there. And listen as the Spirit speaks to you. It's time for us to be determined to do what we can to reach as many people as we can with the good news that will change their lives. Jesus is the only one who can give true life. He's the only way to eternal life. And He is the only way to true happiness. As we follow what we understand through our personal reading of Scripture, and as we connect deeper with the Holy Spirit through prayer and fasting, we'll find ourselves making an impact on people who are not currently following Jesus. Amen. Wouldn't you like to know that someone else is going to spend eternity in heaven because of what Jesus is doing in you? Wouldn't you like to experience the blessing of leading someone you care for to a saving knowledge of Jesus as Savior? Wouldn't you feel blessed to know that God is sending you to share His truth with people who are hungry for truth and searching for righteousness? I'm going to be calling you to action over the next few months, the next few weeks, maybe months. I don't have an ending yet. And I believe that God's calling us, calling you, for the long term. I believe He's been calling all of us for probably a long time. So let's determine today that we'll go forward following Jesus and doing what He asks all of us to do. Then we'll watch Him build His kingdom through us as He builds us and blesses us. But, before we can do any of that, we have to ask ourselves a question or two. John 3, 16 and 17 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. This means that this God I've been talking about this morning, He did everything He could so that every one of us would have eternity with Him. That every one of us would know Him through the death of His Son. He's done everything necessary for us to receive new life. And this new life is more than just a fresh start. This new life is a refreshing, excited life that wants to tell everyone 
about what he's done in us. It's a, it's a very good feeling to know that we're truly free. And, and the freedom that comes from meeting Jesus is hard to explain, but it's extremely rewarding when it's experienced. Then, once we've made the decision to ask Him into our lives, we realize that we need the Holy Spirit to give us the power we need to live as He asks us to live. Amen. So, as we move from this service, to our lunch plans, I have to ask you, will you seriously search your heart and ask yourself, have I received Jesus into my life? Have you determined to follow Him with all that you can? Have you realized that your need to experience the infilling power of the Holy Spirit is more than you can put away from you anymore? If the answer is yes, will you come and ask and receive what God has for you? Stand with me. If you'd like to meet Jesus this morning, I'm asking you to come to this altar and pray. That's what these altars are here for. Come and pray. If you'd like to talk to Him about how He wants to use you this year, starting today. I'm asking you to come to these altars and pray. If you'd like to ask Him about how you can be more empowered through His Holy Spirit. If you'd like to open yourself to receiving a fresh infilling from His Holy Spirit. I'm asking you to come to these altars and pray. Jesus says, if you will acknowledge me publicly, then I will acknowledge you before the Father. If you need to acknowledge Jesus in any way this morning, I'm asking you to come to these altars and pray.
said, Jesus said, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Right? Take my yoke upon you. And I will give you peace. See, He did it all. He made a way for all of us. And He's constantly calling us back to Him. Don't leave this place without knowing for sure that everything you have Everything you've done is under the blood of Christ. And He has paid it all for you. That song, I remember really well when my Baptist friends told me I couldn't leave without singing I Surrender All. But it's true. You have to surrender all because He has so much more for us. Don't leave without the blessing of knowing Him. Lord God, I thank You that we can come into this place, that we can worship You, that we can serve You with all that we are. And we know, God, that You have more for us. So use us. If there's one here, Lord, that doesn't know You personally, that's praying for salvation right now, I pray, God, that Your Spirit would fall on them in such a way that they can't contain themselves, but they got to run and shout and talk about how good you are. If there's one here, Lord, that's receiving your spirit fresh and new this morning, I pray that you would give them the ability to speak that truth, to share that truth, to, to just be excited about what you're doing in them. If there's one here, Lord, that's just being, just being real with you for the first time, if there's one here that's being set free from some addiction, if there's one here that is just seeking more and more of you as their Savior, I pray, God, that you would give them such an infilling that they cannot keep it to themselves. God, use us. Fill us and send us out. And help us to be the active army for you. We give you glory and praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go in peace.